So we've got we've got kind of an interesting episode planned today, and this is something oh yeah. That, First off, that we've welcome back. Before. Oh yeah, thanks. Devil Man's back. Oh, it's me. Yeah, Hi, well, Gigi. Here, <laughs> oh, yeah. Right out the bat. Gigi, we did this just for you <laughs> yeah. well, and all the other ladies in the audience because we have never gotten so much feedback from female fans than the episode that we did with you. Oh, I think it, was, hair. it was very, very popular. Oh, very man. popular. I'm telling you guys, you are enough lady candy as it is. I mean it. When you went out to the bar, you got some girls having crushes on you. And I said, back off. Oh, good. They're, they're mine. Good. <laughs> <laughs> But well, well welcome yeah. back, gentlemen. Thank you. It's a, well, it's a late birthday gift for me. Um, it, happy now, birthday! It, imagine yeah. that that Joel and I have been been doing the show for a while now. Never got that much of a response from the ladies. One episode with you and our our DMs on the Iconoblast account blew up about you. So you're you're worth more than two of us. Oh, that's not true. Uh, He's this, lying. It's, it's nice of you to say. Yeah, it is nice. I do. I don't. I don't mind the smoke being blown up my ass. It's vacuous, so there's a lot of room in there. Just keep going. I'm just trying to build you up why because it, you got. Why is it like that? Uh, my time in Germany. I don't know what that means. <laughs> what, what happens in Germany? I'm just making sure that you have plenty of confidence going into this because we've got a very special episode planned today. Where the last time you were on the show was the first time we ever did an episode that I didn't write myself. And today, now we're we're breaking new boundaries. We're breaking we're, down walls once again. We're just fucking swinging for the fences, and you're going to be the one hosting the show today. Yeah. Oh boy. How do you feel so, about that? Are you nervous? Ah, uh, no, not a yeah. Obviously. Do you want to put these on? It helps. No, that looks so terrible. With the Let me see. So, okay. You All can right. take them off. Let's see what he looks like. I mean, like. It, it's the worst. Gigi, what do you think? Coop. <laughs> I'm into it. I'm I like actually, it. No, there's no, there's no way. Okay. I can't read anyway. That's true. You just have to sit here and look beautiful. I'm actually going to have to read all this stuff that I write, these prose. Welcome to my life. Mm. And also, welcome to the Iconoblast podcast. This is the show that takes a look behind the public facades of famous icons to show you why you can never take anything at face value. I am Matt Cooper. Across from me is Joel R. Benner, as What's usual. Up? And once again, we are joined by the one and only John Devilman. Hi. Iconoblast! We put the past on blast! Hit them with the truth, with things you never knew! Nobody is safe, no thing to place! Got Joel and Coop with history in your face! Iconoblast! Presented by GhostBed.com. So you know what? If we're gonna do this right, I think that I think John should take the hot seat. Yeah, I think he should too. It's a big step going on. There. I've never <laughs> sat on that. Well, actually, I, I was too yeah. drunk to remember, but I sat you on it yes, for about ten minutes time. on the last episode. John McAfee. Very briefly, I only passed this seat uh, off look, to very important people. You look way hotter on that side. Okay. I do. This is the side with the best lighting. Yeah. I make sure. Oh, <laughs> all right. Here we so go. So, John, Ooh. take your seat. Thank oh, you. yeah. Thank the, you. The, the swapping of men. Ah, uh, well, I might give you this as well. All right. Well, before we jump into this, I'm just going to get the ad read out of the way, and then we're going to let you take it away from there. Okay. All right. Sounds so, good. So, as always, the Iconoblast podcast is brought to you by ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Ghostbed has been a loyal sponsor of the drinking bros for five years now, and everyone here in the studio loves them. Ghostbed makes high-quality mattresses right here in the good old USA, and each mattress comes with a 20-year warranty. You can try a Ghostbed mattress for 101 nights, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can return it, no questions asked. Their mattresses and pillows have cooling technology to keep you cool on those hot, sweaty nights, and Ghostbed also offers an adjustable base that is best in class and costs less than the competition. The adjustable base has 15 massage modes, zero gravity, and tons of other great features. <laughs> My sunglasses. Thanks. Right now, GhostBed is offering a flash sale where you can get 40% off when you buy a mattress and adjustable base, or 30% off of everything when you use the promo code Drinkin' Bros. You can buy a mattress for about $35 a month, and they have no money down, 0% APR financing. Head over to GhostBed.com forward slash Drinkin' Bros to take advantage of their awesome deals. That is GhostBed.com forward slash Drinkin' Bros. Ghost bed. Sleep so good, it's scary. Woo! Oof, not quite as scary as hosting this show in front of you guys, but... Trust me, John, if, if I can do it, you can do it I, for that's, sure. It's not working, yeah, mean, but I appreciate I, it. I can wear sunglasses on this episode because I don't have to read anything. I feel so fucking there you go. free. There you go. Wow. Oh, All wow. Right, let's see how these look on me. I don't think round sunglasses You are look really, like uh, uh, maybe Leon the Professional. Oh, I can, yeah. I can live with that. Like a younger version, yeah. 
Um, so I guess I should preface this by saying there's a lot of Japanese words in this episode that I wrote. And so everybody I'm, should be ready to drink. It's not racial if I just mispronounce it. But Did you yeah. say Japanese? Drink. <laughs> <laughs> Musha Shugyo is an errant samurai's quest or pilgrimage at which time a warrior, called a Shugyosha, would wander the land developing their martial talent, seeking out fierce opponents to further develop their skills to become peerless under the heavens. Imagine, if you will, being a traveling samurai on Musha Shugyo. You leave your home and your family, and all for the sake of ambition, to make a name for yourself. To become... Yeah, to make a name for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> become See, this is what I do with every single episode, John. Oh, that's every fine. single to goddamn fucking episode. Yeah. To be the strongest. What's it like being on this side now? Is it know. a little re like relaxing? Yeah, a little bit less pressure. It's nice. Yeah? All right. All right, continue. Here. All right. You rock up to a village. You plant your wooden sign in the ground, as one does at the time, and you advertise your intent to challenge the best fighters there to pit their martial prowess against yours in duels to the death. Ooh. What did the sign say? It said, I'm here to looking for the strongest fighters. Meet my challenge for a duel to the death. And they just stand by, like, do they just stand by the sign in the their time full they'd set of gear? by and they'd be like, who's this crazy motherfucker who just wants to slaughter people? But, but then, so in... Do they stand by the sign, though? Like, in their full samurai gear? Yeah. Just waiting. I'm not kidding, yeah. They'll sometimes <laughs> just, Indian style, sit there, or you sign your name at the bottom, and, the, and, and you, it's like a meeting place, kind of like a preordained, like, meet me here. You'll sign your name, they'll oh. come back, check on it. It's almost like old school um, posting boards and stuff. Yeah. Meet me at the tavern midnight. So imagine you put up your sign challenging someone to duel you to the death. Then imagine an unbathed, wild-haired, 13-year-old boy writing his name on the board in answer to your challenge, plucking the sign out of the ground, proclaiming himself to be the strongest, and then using it to beat you to fucking death. <laughs> <laughs> Most 13-year-old kids today are playing Fortnite or learning TikTok dance trends. Fucking children. Shinman Musashi no Kami Fujiwara no Harunubo, more popular uh, known what? as Miyamoto Musashi, is probably the most celebrated kinsai or sword saint in Japan's history. Musashi was born in the spring of 1584 in the village of Miyamoto and given the name Shinman Takezo. He was Drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it! I don't understand what All he right, said. I'll, I'll do it too. You don't understand just because you don't speak fluent Japanese like I do, Joel. 100% fluent. Uh, Takeza was the son of nobility. His mother was said to be the daughter of a local chieftain who died either during childbirth or left after being divorced. His father, Munasai... I mean, Musashi probably came out of the womb with a sword, so I'm assuming that would kill his mother. Yeah. With a wooden sword. Probably. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Foreshadowing. Yeah. Oh, this is like you know a little oh, bit about this. Oh, there we drink, go. Yeah, drink. Oh, Fuck. Joel, you, you told me before the show that I can't get too drunk or else it's going to be too hard to finish the the episodes that we're doing, <laughs> and you're doing shit like that. Uh, I did not. I love it. Um, his father Munasai was a warrior in the Shinmen clan and a master of the martial arts who is particularly adept at swordsmanship, jujitsu, and the use of a jite, a weapon shaped like a J that could be used for both offense and defense. Being it's, able to attack- Can you use it sexually? Yeah, of course. Cool. If you're brave it's, enough. It's basically like a rabbit. You have the point that goes in and the little vibrating point there. It's J. It's like a, a J a shape. What? Like a what? Except much, much sharper. You know what a rabbit is. What's a rabbit? Uh, I'll Vib some good vibrating ones. dildo that stimulates the clitoris at the same time. Yeah. Joel, come on. Basically, what it would do is you could use it for offense by jabbing somebody, or if you could catch the sword, you could parry it away and even break the tip. So the sword, yeah, I know a lot about the sword. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the different kind of sword. sword. Yeah, the riddle of steel. The riddle of steel. And he would ask me, "Who'd win in a fight, Arnold or, or Co I mean Conan or this Conan. guy?" Okay, all right. Just Moving on. You were Munisai. just trying to start a fight right there. <laughs> yeah. No. Munasai, a renowned warrior in his own right, was so skilled that he was invited for an exhibition match in front of the shogun Ashikaga against Yoshioko Kinpo, another Ashikaga. martial arts... Ashikaga. 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 Another Ashikaga. Martial was that arts... racist? Yeah, I guess so. No, it's... It's, uh... Yeah, I don't care. Uh, I'm drinking. Yeah. Yeah, might as well drink for that just to be safe. We don't want to let the fans Because Chikaka down. is the part of the Wachutu tribe. I don't think they're Japanese. Mm, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the... No, they're real. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure they're not Japanese, though. Yeah, no, definitely I mean, at least the last time I checked, Japan wasn't in Africa. Yoshi Yoshioka Kimpa 
Kimpo was another martial arts master said to be the best in the land. Munasai was able to win two out of three rounds in front of the shogunate, which won him the title of Martial Artists Invincible Under the Sun. <laughs> Munasai, the unequaled. The unequaled. Uh, so, fun fact, uh, this shogunate, the uh, shogunate, shogunate, I'm gonna shogunate all over you. Shogunate or shogunate? Shogunate, obviously. I don't know how you do episodes with sunglasses on. I, I can't do it. Shogunate. Uh, Ashikaga, he was one of the ones that lost to Nobunaga's forces. Shikaga. Oh, really? Yeah, Nobunaga, who obviously had Yasuke yeah. uh, in his employ. So, um, Yasuke may have actually been instrumental in Ashikaga's downfall. Holy shit. That's an interesting connection. I thought it would be. Yeah, that's fucking <laughs> awesome. Well, I mean, in, anybody listening to the show, I'm, I'm sure they're familiar with our episode about Yasuke, who was a, the first black samurai. Uh, not just the first black samurai. He was the first foreign samurai, or the first foreign-born person to ever become a samurai that was documented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which had a lot to do with Nobunaga and his policy, which we can yeah, talk Yeah, which we'll about talk later. about more later. So, uh, Munasai is now the unequal. Munasai the unequal. But that title haunted him. He lived in fear, and that fear extended to his child. Home life for Musashi was not a pleasant one. His father was stern and abusive, and Musashi was flippant and disrespectful. Oh. Mm-hmm. Had a little bit of fire in him. Still, Munasai drilled his martial arts into Musashi, wanting to pass on his knowledge to his heir. When Musashi was seven, his contentious relationship with his father met a head when Munasai threw a dra dagger at Musashi's head. Musashi barely dodged the projectile, which landed in the wall next to him. He then retrieved it and threw it back at his father, who <laughs> only had time to Holy lift shit. his forearm before being struck in the head. What the fuck? He killed his dad? He tried to. His dad threw a fucking throwing knife at him, and then he threw it back. Fuck you, dad. Was yeah. It, was it like a shuriken or something? No, it was a, uh, it was a throwing knife. It was, was a, it a uh, kunai? Did it have the ring on the tip where you uh, could spin I don't it? believe it was a kunai. Uh, so once again, kunai, things, like these, once, things like these, uh, it's it's a story that, because this is the Iconoblast podcast, we have to look at with uh, wary eye. Um, oh, okay. The, yeah. So a lot of these accounts, because it's taking place 400 years ago, um, I'll even talk about that more where we don't necessarily know how accurate these stories are. Yeah, it might be a little and, apocryphal. Right. People kind of embellishing things of after course. the fact, which, yeah, that, that, that seems happens. to be the case with but, the majority of history. But, right. So um, the story, though, it seems to be told on multiple accounts, but that doesn't mean it just didn't get released into the world and people just ran with it. Yeah. Uh, but the story of Musashi uh, having, a, having a knife thrown at him and also his... His uh, relationship with his father was definitely a volatile one. Um, and he did leave. He, so after this happened, when um, Musashi ran from his childhood home and he never came back. He escaped to Harafuku village. After, where, after that? Yeah. He, he used that as like um, a moment to get the fuck out. And he was comfortable living. He, ra he raised himself. Aside from the martial arts training and the food that he was provided by his family... A lot of the times he was spent in the mountains. So he'd pick up twigs and just practice what his father taught him. How old was uh, he when this happened? This was seven years old. Holy shit. Fuck. And he was already, but you'd also have to understand. if you he the, threw a fucking ninja star into his dad's head? Or it I mean, was a knife. fucking knife. Yeah. It was a, like a throwing knife. Was that racist? No. Assuming well, he was a ninja star because they're Japanese? Well, no. They would have ninja stars. Okay. Yeah. Well, ninjas are... Chinese, uh, yeah, no, ninjas. Well, so both. Drink. both uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, not, <laughs> At that point, we have to. It wasn't racist, but it was uh, insensitive, right? Mm -mm. Or just. It's actually I'm a very retarded. good question. Like, I'm, so here's the thing: a, a lot of Japanese and, and Chinese, there, there was a lot of intermingling of, and they, and they don't like this. But even the Japanese language, a lot of it comes from China. Okay. And um, a, there were ninjas in both. Although in China, they were probably called something else, but they definitely did employ them. Um, the thing about ninjas and, and samurai, a lot of the times, ninja were viewed as dishonorable. They were necessity, so you needed ninja. But uh, I remember one quote, to die a ninja's death is to die a dog's death. Well, ninjas were, were primarily like... Uh 
the equivalent of like modern day insurgents. The, yeah, weren't they? It, it, they, they, they were there for subterfuge. They snuck about, uh, stabbing in the back, which is very inunable. When you go like most of these, uh, what we're going to talk about in here is there's going to be a lot of dueling in here. And even there, you mention your intent. You go, hey, I'm here to fucking kill you. You down? Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, fucking let's go then. And that's how it was. It's very like, this is who I am. Here's my name. But you could say also, I'm here to have a duel, but not kill you. Like, I, yeah. I would like to train with you. Yeah. And that was also normal. Yes. Uh, but you would you would announce your intentions right. beforehand. You right. wouldn't go up. It, Sneak it's, attack. Uh, it's kind of similar to the, well, I mean, maybe not the best equation or best way to equate it, but. 69? The, uh, no. Oh. <laughs> Everything goes back to 69 for you, Joel. <laughs> 69, dudes! Yeah, uh, it's similar to how, which also might be uh, might be a bit of a made-up story, but how uh, during the Revolutionary War, the British were still using the the tactics where everybody would get together in a line, right. stand in and line, we had and fight that way. In the, in the United States. And, uh, yeah, the Americans started shooting people from the bushes, and that was seen as dishonorable because it's not a, a stand-up fight. But then that, that also goes it, back also to works. all is fair in love and... And war. Right. 69. Yeah. 69. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, uh, at the age of seven, after this confrontation with his father, he Musashi runs from his home to never come back. He escapes to... Harafuku village where the theory has him looking for his real mother and another one has him staying with his uncle Doran. Doran was a Buddhist monk once said to walk the bloody path of a warrior but had since renounced the way of the sword to focus on study and meditation. He raised Musashi at the edge of town at a small Buddhist temple where Musashi learned to read and write as well as to meditate and seek spirituality. Musashi, however, would often escape to the mountains where he could practice what his father taught him, improvising along the way, spending the fucking rage that motherfucker put in him by slashing at tree trunks with, and rocks with the twigs that he'd find on the ground. Yeah, I used <laughs> to do the same thing. He's not special. <laughs> <laughs> I but he had it the, didn't look as cool when you did it, though. Losing your balance every time you swung the falling, stick. Falling off the cliff. <laughs> Should we do that story again? Yeah, well, I've, I've told him enough. But yeah, that's how I fell off a cliff. Big fucking deal. <laughs> uh, in his youth, Musashi was said to have a formidable, unrefined, almost primal bloodlust that others around him could sense. Oh. Almost beast-like. They called him a demon. They did? Yeah. Sweet. I was going to ask, what did he wear? Like, when he went out to the forest, because he's at seven years old, was he like making his own clothes and shit? You no, you he have was just, just naked the whole time, you, right? You just yeah, you just have your robe on. I mean, probably like every other seven year old, he's dressing up like Spider Man. Oh yeah, that's what my nephew does. I met, I'm I'm imagining him in like a diaper. <laughs> how, seven year old how old were you diaper? when you how stopped I, wearing well, diapers? Yeah. Well, you know, it's like the cloth thing that looks like a diaper. Oh yeah, the, the, little the weird bit. puffy white yeah. cloth. There's thing. a there's a word for that, but I can't remember it because that's I, what I see. Yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know a lot about Asian history. That's uh, obviously because I'm a I'm a fucking racist white guy. I don't know very drink. much about. Yeah, yeah, I'm drink. pretty sure that's drink. Yeah, but like I got that I'm, on myself. I'm picturing basically a Japanese Mowgli right now. Yeah, you can. Actually, okay. that's a fit description. I would say he probably had a robe on, though. But definitely, uh, he was very unkempt. He yeah. um, Living in the jungle. Yeah. He, he would sneak off. And that, that's reported. Like, he spent most of his time in the mountains. Some other mythos say that uh, while there, maybe he found the grave of a samurai in a cave and found this man's sword. Crom. Exactly. Crumb. Crumb. He found the sword. <laughs> the same thing happened to me when I was a child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but and, and but he would he would go about and uh, because Munasai did teach him, and that's the other thing is when you're the son of a samurai, they start teaching you basically as soon as you can as hold. As soon as you can walk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he did know from his father a great deal of martial arts. I think my mom might have been a samurai because she was teaching me how. To, I, she, I learned how to swim before I could walk. It's kind how of, many homeless it's kind people of did she thing. kill with her katana? Twenty-three. <laughs> she, she was. She was probably a samurai then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or some, you know, variation of a samurai. You know. So, so here's here's the meaty part. When Musashi was thirteen, a traveling samurai and strategist, 
Arima Kihei put a sign up near Seiyo River, challenging any local swordsman to a duel. Musashi wrote his name on the board, accepting the challenge. Kihei thought this was a joke, but figured he would use the experience to teach the brash young boy a lesson. One version of is this his first fight. Yeah. Okay. Cool. One version of events tells that before the duel, Musashi's uncle Doran pleaded with the samurai to forgive his nephew, and when distracted, Musashi charged the unprepared samurai with a six-foot quarter staff and bashed him in the skull with it, rending him unconscious. <laughs> then beat him to a bloody pulp until he was dead. Fuck. Another version of the story has Musashi announcing his intent to still challenge the Ronin samurai, who then drew his wakazashi before being brained with a large wooden club Musashi carried, dying immediately from the impact of the blow. Wait, so he... All right, first of all, I, I feel like the more... Well, actually, let me ask you, what, what do you think is the more realistic of the two, that, that he just let his childhood angst tank over and, and ran up and bashed this guy in the head with a stick? When, or he flat out announced himself and said, I'm, I'm going to fight you. The guy squared up with him and then lost the fight? I think he squared up with him. It's hard to, once again, and I even have this written, as, as we find out in the podcast, it's really hard to verify events that happened 400 years but ago. But what do you think? I honestly think you, all right, you're a samurai. You're trained. How are you the, getting, I've got, yeah, how are you going to get? You're trained. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. If this guy, it would be so hard for, one, to anyone to get a swing on you. If you saw this kid coming up and he's got a fucking Stick. A, a, a bow staff, you know something's going on yeah. and and um so i think the most likely story is him pulling his sword on on musashi and just getting brained that that yeah, seems you, the how, most likely how's a little kid gonna surprise a samurai and and you'll see that there's been it seems like there's a lot of discontent with a lot of people who want to find holes in this story where they try and say that um a lot of these wins musashi had done some kind of uh, surreptitious way to get the advantage, which is fair because in the Book of Five Rings, which he wrote later on in life, he does talk about strategy, like having the sun behind you. Uh, there's other things that I'll go into later. I don't want to get into it too much. But I, I honestly can't believe if you're a martial artist and you're meeting here for a duel, even if this guy's like, please forgive my son, Musashi would have to come a great distance to attack you within a zone of killing for you. So it's very, very likely that this person did draw his blade with the intent of either disarming or... And just didn't expect the skill level... Exactly. ...or what just happened. The something savagery. Else, something else that I think's interesting is you said that he drew his wakazashi, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which the wakazashi is like the... The small the, sword. Yeah, the, the smaller sword. So that... That to means me, he was that, like, oh, a little that would make kid. sense. Where he's like, oh, okay, well, this is some little kid charging at me. I'll just, I'll just bring out my my little knife. Yeah. Instead of my drawing his piece. katana, so, because they they carried two swords at the time, right? Well, we'll get into that later because that's okay. something important uh, that I would like to talk about because I know that we're running on time, but I'm almost done with the second page. To be honest, like, oh, yeah, we're making a good time then. Uh, so um, we'll talk about the fighting styles of uh, Musashi the the importance of each sword and uh, different weapons in general as we go on uh i do believe that um i do believe he did pull the uh wakazashi and he did have the intent of probably disarming musashi mm -hmm. he probably didn't take it seriously just like if your little cousin or something tries to come up and, and wrestle you with yeah. you you don't expect like, him to, <laughs> right yeah, I you don't expect him to put you in a fucking either. arm bar yeah. you know and then, and then like <laughs> Fuck your woman, you know? It's just, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he probably, in all honesty, didn't take Musashi seriously, and it cost him his life. Killed him. Do you think he bashed him to death after, or was it, or was it one, one um, hit? I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and imagine that it, he probably did he clip hit him, him pretty times. good. Yeah, he clipped him pretty good. And that would be but, adrenaline. But You're a kid. It's your first fight. You'd be you'd bash him a and, few and more if, times. And if and if the story has the uncle Doran there begging for his his uh, nephew to be forgiven, then you'd also uncle imagine would the uncle would pull him off. So he probably hit him four times. Then the mm -hmm. uncle pulled him off. Th that's why I think that the uncle might not have been begging for Musashi, and it may have been like a straight on duel. 
Because oh, maybe if, the the uncle uncle, even there. if the uncle was there and he's there, like, please forgive my nephew. He doesn't know what he's doing. And then nephew comes, bashes fucking samurai, hits him really hard, and knocks him unconscious. You might be like, what the fuck? Get off of him. I'm yeah. a Buddhist, by the way. Stop it. Yeah. Uh, but that didn't happen. He definitely killed this fucking guy. So I don't it's think that, that, I don't that think make, the door I'm yeah, begging. Yeah, makes sense. I, I think the samurai took this seriously and was like, yeah, you want some? Come get some. And... And yeah, and he lost. Yeah, that was a fucking his last mistake. Fuck, you got too cocky. Three years later, so he's sixteen. At now he's sixteen. He's already had two he's duels. Tough. He's a, he's a man now. He's had two duels since each one. So three total. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, at the age of sixteen, Mush- uh, Musashi had another duel against a more notable strategist named Tadashima Akiyama. The Tadashima. Drink. Are you Wait, just doing so this because you want Arnold, to drink? If Arnold tries to say a name, it's fucking racist. You guys are racist. We're drinking because of that. All right, fair. Uh, okay. I was going to do it anyway. Once again, it is said that Musashi bludgeoned the fellow to death with a wooden sword called a bokin. In yeah. fact, you'll find that he uses the bokin for most of his duels. When we were hammered the other night, that's the only reason why I said wooden sword earlier is because yeah. we talked about this a little bit the yeah. other night hammered he yeah. likes he likes wood well see now i have a theory about that i think the musashi uses his boken for his duels um because so at his at this time in his life he's like six feet tall which for japanese he's standards six, at the six time, feet tall at yeah. 16 and he's japanese yeah holy Drink. shit that's bullshit no at what? the time at the time genetically that wasn't a big thing because they didn't have the hormones in the food that we have now that uh, that is making everyone big as fuck um, I'll drink anyway. Well, yeah, because well, I mean, I'll drink anyway because I I want to drink. But I mean, Yasuke yeah, they made there. a made a big deal about Yasuke's height. Yeah, yeah. but he was African American. God but, damn but, it! Now I got to drink twice. Yeah, that is true. Shit. No, you got to drink too. You don't fucking sit around and don't drink. I didn't say anything. What? Yasuke's tall because he's African American. That's the same thing as you saying that, that he had gigantic balls because he's African American. He did have gigantic balls. I'm sure he did. I'm positive that he did. Look, guys. But it's, it's still apparently and that's racially insensitive. Is I think, that what I do you think? think? They have to drink again. Yazuke, yeah, did Yazuke have giant black balls or not? Fuck yeah. Fuck, that's two more drinks, Joel. No, just no, one it's long a drink. question. One long drink. Okay, so anyway, going back to why I think he used the Boken so much. The Boken so is, a, is, a, is, is a wooden, wooden sword. staff. Wooden it's sword. It's a wooden sword. It's like a practice sword. Yeah. So I did some research on this. Uh, Wait, is that the one that's a bundle of reeds, or it's a solid? No, it's a solid. Uh, so it's oh, something okay. that he is could actually. Is it sharpened? No, no, it's not. It's just a. It, it's a blunt it's a wooden weapon. It's yeah. a club shaped like a katana sword. Which, by the way, I just got to jump in real quick. Did you know? Did you guys it's know that penis. the the single most effective weapon in all of human history is just a stick? Makes sense. Because you the, find it anyway. For the longest period of time, and even compared to, uh, like nunchucks. Not compared to my fucking Glock useless 9 millimeter. compared to a stick. Well, uh, of course, if you compare it to a Glock 9mm, it's... What about the chain gun I used in Terminator 2? <laughs> by the way, I'm not a fan of Glocks. I've been telling you that for years. I, I don't like the way that they recoil. Sorry, Glock fans. Ooh, you're going to get some hate mail on the, that. Oh, no, I know. But, dude, the Glock community? Yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't... Oh, yeah, people that like Glocks, they fucking love Glocks. I love Glocks. See? <laughs> Well, I don't know anything a, about how, how good they are, but I just like the way they look, and I've always wanted them. I feel like that's the majority of Glock fans. Well, I'm telling you, you live in Texas. It's easy enough to go and rent one at one of the gun ranges over here and yep. have a go. But We'll do that after we get drunk and do a couple of shows, and then oh, we'll go shoot it. some Glocks. Let's go hang out with my parents. They've, <laughs> they've got like 30-plus guns. Nice. Do they have Glocks? Oh, yeah. Will they give me one? No, <laughs> they're, they're not going to prison. Damn it! Oh, you got to You get a Texas license. You can go to the gun store, buy one same day, and you can legally carry it now. Yeah, constitutional. I won't be carry able to passed. get a license here until I pay off all my debt, which is extremely high. Oh no! Well, that's oh, what the oh. podcast is for. So please, <laughs> everyone, subscribe to the Patreon. Tell your friends about the show. Let everyone know about the Iconoblast podcast. We so don't have a Patreon. Guys, yeah, we don't, we don't have a Patreon. Mainly subscribe and, and review on on iTunes. Rate, that's, subscribe, and review. That's that's what's important. We're trying to get back up on the charts again now. Help and Joel ratings. pay off that debt. The ratings so I can and buy reviews. a Glock. Yeah. Don't don't let. Uh, that's an argument against us making more money. You you don't need a Glock, Joel. I need a Glock. 
So if you want me to get a Glock. Okay, get Joel a Glock. <laughs> Going back to why I think that he <laughs> Sorry, is the Falcon. All right, so. Uh, I'm really good first, at shooting a, 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 a Nerf gun from the hip. I can hit you right between really? the eyes. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, so you you should definitely have a, that, a that real makes, firearm. Yeah, yeah that, and then that's I'll train. A perfect transition. I want to train uh, with a Glock from the hip, firing at the range, only shooting from the hip. There's someone who did that on YouTube. Yeah, I want to do that with a Glock, though. I'm pretty sure they use revolvers for most perfect. of the hip shooting. Perfect. No, I mean, there's a whole fighting style. I can't remember the name of it. it it's what John yeah, Wick was, uses. I was all... I was all into it a long time ago, and most of those nerds are all it's called like, using revolvers. It's called like central lock reset or uh, something Stinky. like that. I don't know. Somebody in the somebody in the premiere is going to correct me on that, which I appreciate. Uh, so, the reason I think one of the reasons there's there's a few reasons why I think that he uses the Boken is because after doing some research, uh, I was curious about how much it actually weighed, and it's about three hundred to five hundred grams, usually about three fifty grams. Whereas a katana weighs about 1.2 kilograms, so that's like mm. two and a like two and a half point six pounds. Uh, and I know He's that's faster. that's only a slight advantage, but he already has the height, the the reach, and the strength. So he knew that even if it was just a club, he'd be able to rend his opponent unconscious or even have a kill strike. That's just one theory. Or he's gonna hit him first, most likely. Right. Or maybe he was just a brutal as shit motherfucker who liked <laughs> braining samurai like a fucking <laughs> savage. Also, it's pretty easy just to pick up a fucking twig off the ground and carve it into something you need. Like katanas yeah. probably cost but a little bit of too, money. Like you see a, a guy coming up to challenge you, you're a samurai, you've got your steel. Yeah. This guy shows up with like a piece of wood. You're not going to take him serious. So you're, it's also a mental game. Not fucking yet. Yeah. You just wait. Like, wait, you're going to... Where's your sword? Oh, so Thank you, Jesse, for uh, leaving your hard kombucha here. I'm drinking it now. She's going to be so mad. Because she... I know she watches oh, this. Oh, yeah, thanks for the vodka. I drank all of it. <laughs> Mine? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. I left it there. I drank you. it at, for the, during the premiere. I finished it off during okay. the premiere. Okay. I just remember Jesse. Uh, so we did kind of drink together because you were in the chat with us. I, I just want to. I'm just going to give a message to Jesse. Um, you've met me. <laughs> How fucking dare you? <laughs> just call me that crazy long haired guy. That hurt. All right? She calls me that fucking nerd with glasses still. That's mean. I, I've been working here for. That's a, true. For like almost eight months now. She you calls me what? the nerd camera she guy. Got, she got you the job, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm not complaining, and I'm drinking her alcohol. Fuck yeah. So take that, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. Nailed you it. beauty. All right. She um, is a babe, though. So, now, guys, uh, well, let's go back to Nobunaga. So, we talked about Nobunaga on the show, and yeah. um, right now, Nobunaga, it's, it's the feudal Japan state is... In an uproar. Pretty much Ieyasu, who is a general of Nobunaga's. Nobunaga's gone. Nogahito, his son, is also gone. He's the one that got his head chopped off, right? Yes. Pretty sure they both did. Yeah, yeah. they both did. Because they both committed seppuku. Um, or seppuku, however it's pronounced. And, and wow, I, Nobunaga's such an interesting character, and I would love to do a show on him at some time. But more interesting enough... Uh, we were talking about this before the podcast. Nobunaga, one of the things, one of the reasons he was able to rise up to power is because he would take, like we were talking about, if you were a samurai, your children were samurai. If you were a peasant, your children were peasants. Nobunaga was the first one to say, hey, you know what? If you fight for me and you work hard, there's a chance at advancement. Yeah. And that changed the game because then anyone who had any kind of desire, any kind of ambition would put their life on the line for this person. And he was true to his word. More so, and this is the more interesting figure, one of his generals, Hideyoshi. 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 He was a pretty handsome guy. Actually, they called him the monkey. <laughs> 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 but uh, he was a brilliant strategist. And, and I, I don't want to get too much into it, but um, so I'll just give, I have to give two of his exploits because he's such a fucking amazing character in history. Hideyoshi, 
uh, when he was a general of Nobunaga's, uh, one, there was this impenetrable castle that no one could get into, but it was in this depression, so it was like in a valley surrounded mm. by mountains. Uh, Hideyoshi had a siege over this, uh, around this castle, and he was like, well, we can't get to this. It's pretty much impenetrable, and the person inside was an amazing general. What Hideyoshi did is he thought about it, and he's like, well, the rainy season's coming up. Let's build a fucking wall around this castle. Since it's already in a depression, and when the rain settles under this wall, it'll flood the fucking city. And that's what it did. So then, the general, that's this badass. amazing general who has so much clout, had to fucking roll out, commit seppuku in front of him, and then hand over. Because otherwise, all of his fucking vassals and everything, all of his, um, all of the people, the peasants, and everyone who relied on him would be killed. So, but he was badass enough to know he had to yeah, sacrifice himself. That, because that's some cool GS too. shit. He was like, you fucking beat me. But that's the honorable stuff that I was talking about. Yeah. Like, you yeah. have that. You're like, you have bested me. And here I am. Here's my guts. You win. Please protect my people. That is your job. All of these... And this is the other thing that was so crazy. Is like, the Shogunate is basically... And they revered him as a god. He was, uh, he was a divine presence. And he basically just let everyone run rampant. He's like, you guys figure it out. I'm the Shogun. That's me. You guys figure it out. The strong survive. Yeah. And and that's kind of how this was. Another really fucking awesome thing that Hideyoshi did is there was these monks. Uh, and monks... He didn't have any mirrors in his, in his room, that's for sure. No, he did. But you know what the thing is? With such acclaim and, and such presence, it didn't matter. Like, looks are only a, a fraction of it. He was slaying. He was slaying. He kept his mask on, though. Yeah? Like his... his, his uh... MF Doom mask? Well, no, because samurai have their masks, you know. What? Like they, they don't wear them all the goddamn time. They <laughs> well, wear them in did. combat. Well, he was hideous. No, it uh, wasn't. No, see, there's, that's, that's also a conflicting the monkey. Uh, but that could have been because he they was They could have so... been being racist. They could have been calling him the monkey because of how... Because how... he could do flips and shit? Yeah. At, at least, it. no, no, I'm talking about... Because he had hair on his face. He, he was very acrobatic <laughs> in his strategy. So, sure. they, you know, like, if if, if scenario would rise... It's probably because he was short. They were all short, except me. But he Masashi. was shorter. Okay. Do we have to drink for that? Anyway. I think so. Yeah, I think we is have to drink for that. Is that your goal in this, this particular episode, is to make us fucking drink? Seems like uh, it's his goal in every episode. His goal in life. His um, name is got hideous in it, li- and he was called the monkey. He's ugly. Let's, no, it's let's just hi- hideyoshi. It doesn't have hideous in it. Yeah, it's true. But it makes you think of something ugly. By the way, there were so many exploits that he did that were that were incredible. These are the two that stand out to me the most. Um, so there was a <laughs> band of warrior monks, and these monks were causing, and and that's the other thing. Uh, a lot of the times, it just like religious practitioners today. They can kind of get away with shit that other people can't because they're like, oh, we're fucking divine. Uh, we, we speak to the Buddha. Uh, but at the same time, in Japan, a lot of monks are warriors. There is actually a duel that I didn't mention in here against uh, uh, a group of spear fighters that Hideyoshi, um, sorry, Musashi had fought against. And it was a hard fought battle, but it was a pivotal point in Musashi's life. But it was a, it was a warrior monk who used a spear. And a uh, spear with a range, we talked about, you just said the stick is mm-hmm. like one of the most, uh, it's the greatest weapon. Well, now when it has a, a pointed tip t- to it, it's even more dangerous. And yeah. Musashi figured out a way to beat that. I didn't want to go into it because we were pressed for time. But now imagine you have a congregation of these amazing fighter monks. And Hideyoshi had to find a way to defeat them. So they lived on a mountain and they started a war with these guys. They're like, well, we got to fucking take these guys out. And they gave them such trouble. But Hideyoshi being the, and I'm serious, this man was a genius. He came up with the strategy. They're on a mountain in a forest. Burn the fucking Set mountain. Set that fucker on mm. fire. Oh, yeah. And he fucking annihilated them. Killed them all. Yeah. That was Fuck. Hideyoshi. That's and some crazy he, and, and shit, actually. He's fucking incredible. That's called thinking outside the box. It really is. <laughs> but you see... Both of those stories. But, but the thing about that is, and what's so interesting about that, is Hideyoshi was a peasant. He wouldn't have been in that position had Nobunaga not made that decree that anyone with ambition, drive, 
intelligence, obviously, in Hideyoshi's part, could be in his employ. Yeah. So what we were talking about before the show that uh, I actually said we needed to to talk about on the show mm-hmm. was the the connection that I got out of that was it's very similar to uh, Julius Caesar's uncle Gaius Marius uh, going through with the Marian reforms, which the Marian reforms changed the Roman army from being a group of the nobles Mm -hmm. all coming together. He opened it up to literally everyone on the Italian. Well, eventually it was everyone on the Italian peninsula, Yeah, which greatly increased their military strength and arguably led to them becoming a, a much greater military force because instead of having just the richest people, uh, richest people in the country fighting for him. Yeah. It just opened it up to everybody. I mean, similar to what we're doing now. Where I was about to any, say. Any yeah. jackass can, can join the army. I was in the fucking army. Yeah. So any jackass can join the army. Some of them rise to the top. I, I didn't, personally. But, yeah, when you open it up to everybody else, you're just... <laughs> That's so you're, sad. Oh, no, it's not. I, I wouldn't be here today if I... If and I'm I, glad uh, you are. I, I'm, well, I'm on the fence about it. But. Are you? Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> but no, opening it, opening it up to everybody, it just it okay. increases the uh, okay wait, how? for me because I felt bad. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, he was racist was against America. I was coopy and sensitive. That's the only type of racism that I don't like is racism against America. God damn it. Okay, uh, okay, <laughs> fuck off, patriot, <laughs> fuck off. But yeah, if you open it up to everybody, it's just increasing your pool of soldiers. I mean, it's it's really the the most logical thing to do you want to have a bunch of people fighting for you so why not open it up to to everybody yeah yeah uh, and that's and that's what was so um that's why it was so great that nobunaga did this and it was actually nobunaga who set forth the unification of japan he basically set forth the path to end the feudal era of japan um, Hideyoshi was the actual one who unified Japan, but he died. It wasn't, it, he wasn't assassinated. Oops. He wasn't assassinated or anything like that. He just died. And then of course that left a vacuum that other people tried to fill. Mm-hmm. One of those people was his son. And, uh, it was then Iesu who started a war and felt he was the one who should be the next shogun of Japan. And that started the, this all started with the battle of Sekigahara. And legend has it that Musashi actually made a name for himself at the battle of Sekigahara, which was the largest and most important battle of Japanese feudal history that led to the establishment of the Tokugawa shogunate, which is Iesu. And that lasted for 250 years thereafter. Fuck. Musashi, however, was on the losing side of that battle, but had escaped defeat of the Western forces unharmed. Musashi would still have been about 16 years old at the time. However, the thing is, there is no hard evidence to say that Musashi was actually present at the battle or not, because, like I said, this is 400 years ago. But there are some accounts, like the one in Musashi Yokogame, that says Musashi's achievements stood out from the crowd and were known by soldiers in all the camps. Hmm. At 16 years old? At 16 years old. This That's is a different time. Insane. Yeah, how, how, old, like a, how old was Alexander the Great when he... Uh, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, you're an adult already. So, yeah, at that time, yeah, you grew up fast. Um, but... If you grew up at all. Even when speaking about <laughs> it, it Musashi's point. pretty reticent on the matter. Uh, he said he participated in six battles. He doesn't go into great detail about it. But after the loss, Musashi is now a fugitive. Because he split. He was on the losing side. Yeah. Mm. So what does he do? He goes and seeks refuge in the place that raised him, basically. He goes to the forested, forested mountains and there, Back when he was a young Mowgli exactly, in his diaper. Yeah. Exactly. Flipping off of rocks and hitting trees with sticks. Uh, but he goes there and hones his skills. Uh, some stories have him battling bandits. Um, yeah. But no matter what, 
he definitely left behind corpses in his wake. <laughs> because it wasn't until the spring of his 20th year that Shinmin Tikezo reemerges, reborn as Musashi, Miyamoto Musashi. Let me do that one again because I fucking... <laughs> Wait, who is this? Your mama. No, it's the, the guy that we've literally been talking about the entire episode. Yeah. He had a different name when he was young. Yeah, so his name was Shinmin Takezo when, when he was a child. Yeah. But after this time, killing bandits, hitting trees, talking to butterflies. Wearing diapers. Wearing diapers in the forest. When he reemerges, he's reborn as Miyamoto Musashi. This is when he gets his name. He just gives it to himself. Basically, Miyamoto and Takashi have the same spelling because uh, you can you can use the Japanese characters and they can mean different things. So he mm -hmm. just kind of rearranges the way that it sounds. To start a new life. It's spelled the same way, but it's pronounced different now. So he's changing his name so because he, he's hiding or a mixture of reasons. There are, there are reports that um, because of the, the spiritualist that he has become or he started to uh, experiment with or maybe the Buddhists that he would talk to who would try to make him introspectively look at why he was a murderous beast. And he's 19, 20 now? 16. Oh, sorry, 21, yes. 20, 20, 20, 20 21. 21. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and he's going into his spiritual phase at 21. Right. So okay. after taking this introspective look at himself, he realizes that the person that he was may have been dead He's dead, and he is a new person who is going to emerge like a butterfly from a cocoon. He is, mm -hmm. Takezo is dead. I am now Miyamoto Musashi. In the spring of his 20th year, Shin, uh, Shinmin Takezo reemerges re as Miyamoto Musashi. He then travels to Kyoto, which Kyoto. is the capital of the time, Drink. to find renowned swordsmen to challenge. I'm already, I've heard my cup's already in my lips. <laughs> I saw you reaching for the drink as soon as Joel saw that. Yeah, yeah, said yeah. That. So, at this time, the Yoshioko Dude. School Kyoto. is the most talented around. Now, if you remember the name Yoshioko, it was his father who defeated Yoshioko Kimpo in front of the shogunate. Oh, shit. But now, the Yoshioko is the most revered school around. They were the military instructors to the shogunate itself. Shit. No one who challenged them would come away without sustaining some sort of serious injury, and, as a result, no one had been foolish enough to do so for quite some time. But... Until Daddy c came back home. Oh, no, because Miyamoto Musashi was no fool. And oh. he was prepared to die, but he wasn't just going to throw his life away. In the winter of 1604, Musashi, armed with just a boken, makes his way directly into and the school. And that's a wooden stick. A wooden mm -hmm. sword. Makes his way directly into the school and All challenges... All wood, just so you know. I can make a stick out of, out of bronze if I want. It's true. I mean, I guess it wouldn't really be a stick. It'd be a rod at that point. Well, if you made it look like a stick... Okay, was that... Check out this bronze stick. No, no, you was just... That, go, hey, boys, that racist? Just, this is just me. Oh, not, okay. Well, I was just wondering why you were drinking. You I can thought, drink on the show without yeah, being racist. Well, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, okay, maybe well, we should make it a rule that you, <laughs> you can't, can't drink unless you're racist. <gasps> well, <laughs> holy shit, this is... <laughs> this is you gonna... ruined me! <laughs> or you have to be racially insensitive. You don't we're, have to be racist. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you want to drink. Uh, here we go. All right, thank you, John. Okay, no more drinking unless you're insensitive to races for the rest of this episode. Okay, this episode. This is going to become a clan meeting real quick. Oh, no! That was... Was that racist? I don't know, because the moment's out, and I'd have to pour another one. No, it wasn't then. I can pour you a drink while you read this I next be, part. Would mm, you like me to? Please, make it heavy, because I'm a strong guy. <laughs> happy, happy? <laughs> like a happy half? Give me the mixer. No, uh, it was the strawberry right here. Cinco? What the hell did you get yourself? You're going to have a hangover, bud. That's true. Continue, please. In the winter of 1604, Musashi armed with just a boken, makes his way directly to the school and challenges the head, Yoshioka Sejiro, right there, out of the blue, just like that. You have this dirty, disheveled country bumpkin come into one of the most prestigious fighting schools in the country and issue a challenge to the head of it. That's like, that's like a slap in the face, right? Yeah, that's very rude. Very like, disrespectful. Yeah, the sheer And he's fucking, in his early 20s at this yeah, point? Yeah, he's 20. Jesus. 
the sheer fucking nerve, right? Yeah. <laughs> the fucking audacity. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you know how many battles he had been at? It was uh, 69. 69. Uh, okay, so 69 there was four battles, total battles by the time that he admitted to. I thought it was six. So he had had 69. About, uh, the duels. <laughs> He'd had about, I think he'd had about four duels at the time, and then participated in the battle that he lost. And it was said that his achievements were, they stood out, and everyone in the camp knew who he was. But that doesn't say how many people he slew. So I can't say how many people killed, how many people he's killed at the time. Has he but, slept with women at this point? Ah, yeah, I mean, most so likely. that's an interesting thing, actually. R really? Or no. Men. Or no. Women. It has been speculated that Musashi, for the longest time, it's even been speculated that he was homosexual. But what I think is he was so dedicated to the path of the sword that he would throw away distractions like that. To the riddle of steel. I'm the Musashi of video games. There you go. He wishes he was a virgin. So now you have this fucking Sometimes. grimy cunt come in and challenge your school. And he's asking for the head of this... The school that teaches the shogunate. You can't fucking give him your master, but at the same time, to just ignore that this country bumpkin came up off the fucking street and challenged you, to ignore that would be like, uh, it's, it's, he's got some weird... I mean, you'd, it would you'd, put your school's reputation yeah, in you'd have question. To, you'd have to teach him a lesson. You'd have to. Now, this is for any of you who've taken martial arts out. Martial arts out. Any, any of you that have any kind of training... Uh, you can probably imagine that if if some up, upstart off the street came in and challenged your master, he's he's not going to get a fucking match. There's no fucking way. In fact, you'd be so insulted by this piece of grimy shitbaggery that he had the fucking goal to come in and even challenge your master <laughs> or the dojo, which is basically a place of worship that you, the students, would have to teach him a fucking lesson. And that's exactly what fucking happened. They were like, no fucking way. So, these upstarts, these fucking, these students of the school... Yeah. They fought him? They beat him up? They did. They didn't beat him up, though. That's the thing. And, and perhaps, perhaps it was the arrogance of the Yoshioko. Or perhaps it was the superior technique of Miyamoto Musashi. But he bested and killed... Five students that day. Fuck. What the fuck? Before Sijuro took him seriously enough to, to accept his proposal of a duel set to be held in a day's time outside the dojo. Holy fuck. shit. So That's now, some Bruce Lee shit. So now. That's some, like, Ip Man Bruce shit. Bruce Lee's dad. Or, <laughs> dad. Master. Yeah, Ip, Ip, Ip Man. Man. Yeah. Love so, those movies. So, so guys. First two. This is something that Musashi yeah, ends up becoming famous for. And and I'm sure, I know, Coop, that you know about this. Musashi was become famous for not showing up on time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there would be an appointed time and he would show up late. That happened a lot. And it's said that he did that to throw his opponents off, which is a great strategy. And he was a strategist. So I don't put that past him. There's also accounts that say that he was just a lazy cunt who just slept far too long or see that's that's something that i've always wondered is was he was he just such a fucking punk rock samurai that he just didn't give a shit like he was he was winning because he was so fucking good and he knew he can just show up whenever the fuck he wants he's like the john jones of samurai yeah doesn't take anything seriously or was it pre-planned where he's like, okay, I, was he very, do you, like you personally, do you think that he was very, very calculated in what he was doing? Or was he just a fucking rock star? Well, he's known for this, right? He's known for showing Eventually, up late. Eventually. This, this, this would be Not one yet, of though. his first, this is like his taking his, his step on the main stage. Before this, and here's, here's the other thing. Like, one of the stories that, um, there's a popular manga called Vagabond. And this is how I first learned about Miyamoto Musashi. It's taken from a novel also written about him that sold over 170,000. Wait, true story. First, first time I learned about Miyamoto Musashi was from a tattoo on, on a girl's back. Shut up. Wait, why did you see her back? Anyway, what were you saying, John? <laughs> I'm going to drink. What? Wait, that's no, not... No, well, no, well, it's against no, the rules. 
Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, now we all have see, to drink. That's just that's drink. cheating. Mm-mm. Okay, here's the other thing. How's that cheating? That was racially insensitive. Yeah, because yeah, it was, you want us you... to drink. Here's a new rule. You can't cheat. That was a cheat. You that's know that not cheating. Cheat. You were culturally insensitive just because you wanted to drink. Okay, fine. Had nothing to How do with did you... Nope. See nope. the tattoo no, on no, 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 he's doing that so we drink. No, nope, that doesn't... Drink. It's Wait, your, so you don't want to drink? No, John, you're, you're It's your in, podcast. I can't... You're drink. in the captain's chair. Okay. Make no, the call. Put your drink down, Joel. I'm drinking every time. No. I'm racially You can't insensitive. just be racially... If you're going to make the rule that we cannot have a drink unless we're racially insensitive... Then I'm going to be racially insensitive the whole show. Then just fucking take away that one rule that you made up and just drink when you want to. That's not as fun. I've been doing that my whole life. <laughs> drink. Damn it. You're both drunk on power. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, like I was saying, her name was Julie, by the way. Um, and she had, I don't know who this is, but I, I just, I, were you guys showering or, or like, how did, did you, were you a massage story. therapist? It was, it, was, was the... it was during Chuck <laughs> Hank and the San Diego twins. It was a long fucking story. I've heard of that movie. <laughs> what? God damn it. I already got myself in trouble. Is this a sexual for... act? No. That's what I, I didn't think it was. Cause you've I'm never had virgin. sex. Okay, look. You can't. Hey, that, you wait, just, wait, wait. You just fucked up. You drank without. Look, for the sake of what is going through right now, w- let's get that out. Let's not put that in. That sounds terrible. No, he. Nope, that's horrible. I don't. It's going oh, in. No, I, nah, no, I'm being a G ass homie. Yeah, that's going to be in too. Oh my God! No! Yeah, the, Joel's in control of the cut. Ah. <sighs> I've kind of come to terms with Look the at fact me. that... I'm scratching like a crackhead. <laughs> That's terrible. This Actually, is the good shit. No, I want to help the homie. I want to help the homie. No, I'm being serious, though. Coop wasn't having sex. He was the massage therapist on the on the on Chuck Hank in the San Diego yeah. How did Josh Barnett's shoulders feel, by the way? Oh, very firm. Yeah. Very, very firm. Yeah, yeah. So when you were saying he... Had, she had a, uh, a, a, you meant a, a tattoo. You okay, meant I'll come Josh clean. Barnett. I'm talking about Josh Barnett. <laughs> Josh no, Barnett and I Josh had... Barnett, if you listen to this, he has a Grappler Baki tattoo on his back. Uh, Josh does listen right, to the show. Right next to Josh, the Miyamoto Musashi hey, tattoo. By the way, oi, what the fuck, Magnus? Read my script already. I want you to be in Space Vikings. It's the only <laughs> it's the only person I can figure to be in Space Does he listen to the show? Yeah. Oh, fuck. He probably doesn't remember me. Quick little side tangent. I just meant that he meets I've got like a tattoo a on the inside people. of my wrist of a very, very obscure character from the Apogee video me. game. That's not Dig, Dig Dug. Who the fuck is that? No, Dig very Dug. obscure Apogee video is. game. Very first video game I ever played in my life. One of and mine, too. Nobody, One of the first. Nobody has ever been able to identify it. I don't know. Maybe you're, you're having a hard time seeing it. It looks like someone familiar. wearing a football helmet. It is. It is. It's a character called Commander Keen. Oh, I haven't heard of it. Oh, wow. He knew it. He knew, He's the, the only person that just, apropos of nothing, out of nowhere, was like, Oh, is that a Commander Keen tattoo? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, it's an old school Apogee game. I, I love that. I like, Holy fucking Josh Barnett, of all people. Yeah. Was hey, the you, one that, have you listened hey. to Josh on podcasts? Or like, no. in, I, don't, I don't much he's, listen to podcasts. He is, he's hyper quick at speaking, and he's. Dude, I think that he's a genius. Josh, 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 Josh Barnett is hey, for Josh, sure a genius. Uh, I would love to play D&D with you and fight Ooh. you. He plays it. He will kill you. I will lose... But it'll feel good. No, no. Actually, I just... This is... Uh, this is why I love Miyamoto Musashi. This is why I love stories of this era. Because... Mm, there's you a fight thing, to learn. There's a thing. Yes. It doesn't matter if you're going to lose. Here, your life is on the line. Which takes it to a new level. But now we have this thing where we're like... But it's not always that way. You want to duel. You want to duel stronger people because that makes you stronger. Yeah. And it teaches you about yourself. Defeat teaches you about yourself. There's so much that you can learn from having being humbled, and and that's why, like I was uh, when we I said we talked about fight, this the other night. Just I would like fight fatal. when you, if you, well, just getting in a fight in general. Yeah. If you just end up in a fight with someone, you probably end up best friends. Best friends. Worst case scenario, you're gonna learn so much in in, in a ten minute situation. Yeah. There's so much life experience in a fight, and to have someone that experienced who's who's had so much experience. Yeah, it would it would just be amazing to get my ass beat by Josh Barnett. <laughs> yeah, we've all got kings. When you try sometimes. And you can't. <laughs> it's like a shot of you being dropped on your head <laughs> in slow motion. Would you try just sometimes, <laughs> but you don't succeed? <laughs> <laughs> 
but <laughs> remember when he knocked that guy out? That but you're stunt so guy? happy, like oh, dude, as yeah. you're falling on your head, yeah. Devil yeah. Ronald McDonald smiling. smile, <laughs> just <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Uh, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up three days later in a hospital. Yeah. I knew everything. Yeah. <laughs> I learned so much. So, we left off. Musashi had killed five people, and then oh, that's right. Sejiro okay. challenged the leader of this dojo. Fucked accepted. up five of his students, and then killed, killed, and, and then probably fucked well, up. I, Sejiro, I, I dare say they were fucked up if they were killed. Well, he probably killed five and fucked up twenty. You never know. It's 400 years ago. But let's say, go ahead. I'll go with that story. Yeah. I mean, a dojo, like an average dojo's got 20 to 200 fucking kids there. Like they're That's not pretty kid. wide range. But I'm just... Back then, it's, it's, the, it's the military instructor of the shogunate, so everyone trained there. Like, they were like, this is the... Everyone in the land knew about this place. This was the fucking spot. In fact, they were in Edo because they were trained in the Shogunate's army. So there could have been five. They were kids they there. they were like uh, like American Top Team or Shoot to Box or something like yeah, that. They yeah, were yeah. like huge. Or mm-hmm. well, the Gracies. They were like huge fighting. Like everyone who wanted to get good at the craft, and that was a big draw to people at the time. Was like the way of the sword, even though the way of the sword. Yeah, the way of the sword. Yeah, oh, come, <laughs> yeah, the sword. Come. Even though at the time, and and because Japan had been unified, um, EA. So actually, this is this was the start of when, uh, like, you see the Last Samurai with the, like, hey, we don't need samurai anymore. We got guns and stuff like. Guns were present at the time. Th- this was samurai this was used happening. guns. Yeah, uh, yeah, they did. Guns were actually a little bit more common for samurai in combat than mm-hmm. than swords were. At, at yeah, at this time, Th- this was the time where it was like this 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 shift. But still, and you see it in like, you see it in modern stories too. You see it in like Street Fighter when Ryu is like traveling the warrior's path. Why do you fight to find that answer? I don't know. I fight to learn. This was very much still a very big thing. And it's still a prominent theme throughout (laughs) stories worldwide. Um, We fight to learn about other people. We fight to learn about ourselves. We fight to learn about the experience, life and death. There's so much that we can learn just from bowling, bowling up your fist and getting punched in the face. Not by, <laughs> it's, it's strange, but, but it's true. We yeah. can be best friends with someone we just were in a fight with mm-hmm. and be buying each other it's drinks. It's not the direct punch in the face that gives you the knowledge. It's the, it's the recovery, the thought, the process that it forces you into. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so, where were we? Well, where we were at is how late... Musashi was to a lot of his events and how he was famous for it. He became famous for it. But mm-hmm. this is like the first big, like like I said, he was set, setting his foot on the main stage. And um, he showed up to his duel three hours late. Three hours late. <laughs> now, some G, people dude. say this is this is to put his his opponent at a state of an Oh, dude. Some people, people being say, late piss you the fuck oh, off. Oh, dude. That makes now sense. Now imagine three hours late and you're going to kill this guy for just killing five of your students. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what the fuck? You're like, I'm waiting to kill this fucking guy. I'm the leader of the school. And he's not showing up. Where the fuck oh, is yeah. he? Oh, so this cow. He came here looking for me. What the fuck? <laughs> he didn't show. And he's not here. Okay, that's a power move. But, but you know, some people also say he just overslept. You never know. Never. But, wasn't on purpose. Either but, way, it happened. Also, once again, this is an Edo, which is capital at the time. So there's also reports that uh, it, it's at the capital at the time. And there was reports that there was such a large crowd that one, he overslept. And two, it was just so hard for this unknown to get through this crowd of people, this throng that was waiting there to see this leader of the fucking military force destroy some random peasant who had yeah. the audacity to walk into the school and kill yeah, five yeah. of the students. Okay. So now here's the thing. When I get into this, there are conflicting reports as to what actually transpired. Some say that at the start, Musashi leapt upon Sejiro without warning, but I think this vernacular is, is, is misleading because it makes it sound as if there was some kind of a, a sneak attack. Once again. Exactly, which, which obviously I'm not inclined to believe. And I'm not just saying that because I like... Miyamoto Musashi. It's I do believe, however, that Musashi, as he describes it, 
in the Book of the Five Rings has a similar mindset to that of the Cobra Kai, which is strike fast, strike, strike first. first, no mercy. And strike fast he did. Before Sejuro was able to settle and get his brain in the fight, Musashi had dashed it from his skull with an absolute crushing blow from his wooden sword. Brain matter just all over the spectating crowd. Absolutely it's just a repeat. decimating. Crushed him. Destroyed. This sounds like a repeat of the exact first fight. The first where fight, yeah. This guy's underestimating him. It's a fucking He's homeless person. He's a nobody person. at the time. Nobody. Though. He's a nobody. It's the same thing. He walked up, was like, I'm the guy, and then was so fast and just bashed his brains in with a fucking wooden stick again. But like I said, I've read the Book of the Five Rings. He does say, and, and this is no joke, He, it's basically like I'm surmising it, but he's like, strike fast, strike first. Don't let them yeah, fucking... That's worked for me. Yeah. So another reason that I don't like this 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 duel being described as a sneak attack is... There How? Were, <laughs> there were witnesses. Like, yeah. there were a lot of witnesses. And among them, Seijuro's younger brother, Din Shichiro, who was so enraged at the incredulousness that a country hick nobody could challenge and defeat his older brother that he challenged Musashi to a duel on that very spot the very next day. Once again, Musashi was hours late to the duel. However, once it started, it was Dinshichiro who stuck first, but Musashi locked him up and wrestled his wooden sword away from him, throwing him to the ground and beating him to fucking death with it. God damn. Are we, are we, are we beginning to see a theme here? Yeah. We... Yeah, beating people to death with uh, sticks. Uh, fucking. Seems to, seems to be his calling card. But, but, crazy, so there's, but there's also another version of events that has Musashi grabbing Dinshichiro's arm, holding a katana mid-swing, and with his other hand, taking the wakazashi from his waist, Dinshichiro's waist, and using it to eviscerate him. And then, as Dinshichiro is disemboweled with his arm to the heavens, leaving him to not even know that he is dead already. <laughs> <laughs> He's just fucking good at it. So, well, okay. he, so far in all yeah. these uh, duels, he has the element of surprise. Not, not with not, not with Not in the moment, but but just uh, he generates the element of surprise on his own. Like they they, they, don't know they who all he is. think he's a piece of shit. So it's like it's like for well, even even this guy, the son of this guy, yeah, probably still it wasn't the was, son is the brother. The, the brother, brother, sorry, the brother was like, it's not true. Like he was still in denial about it. I, I, like, no, I this think, couldn't have happened. A homeless person fucking killed my brother. No way. You know, like, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Exactly. Uh, it, 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 and then, oh, God and then the it, next right. day, it, like, it was the same confidence and the same bullshit that got him killed. What I, what I liken it to is you have oh. someone who accepts an undercard fight. Oh, no, sorry. You have someone who accepts a last-minute fight for, say, let's just say, a title shot. Yeah. And let's say they're a nobody. They haven't fought... In the big stage yet. Yeah, the Rocky situation. And and let's just also say that for whatever reason, they're amazing. And when they come, the person's like, oh, this is just an undercut, or it's a nobody, and whatever, it's going to be an easy fight, and that person yeah. decimates the fuck out of them. That's exactly what it would be in today's standards. Right. Let's so he just... killed them both. He killed the brothers. Yeah. Of this massive... Yeah, fucking... let's... I mean, seriously, let's put, it, let's put it in perspective. Like, think about it. You're the most powerful school in the land. Yeah. You're the instructor to the shogunate. And some unknown hillbilly caked in fucking dirt with twigs and shit in his fucking hair <laughs> comes up off the street and bludgeons two heads of your school like they were Floyd Mayweather beating one of his girlfriends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck Floyd Mayweather. Call back. <laughs> so he just... No, so no. what happens now? Does he get to no, run think the about school it. Think now? about it. Think about it. No, think about it. Your reputation, your renown, and your financial stability. Probably, above all, your honor are in question. So what do you do? 
What do you do? Put put the new guy in charge. No, you probably do. You got to kill the, him. You have to do. You got to kill him. You have or... to do the most honorable thing of all. Because remember, this is samurais. Yeah. You have to do the most honorable thing of all. So what the fuck do you do? You hold an ambush. <laughs> the most honorable thing. Yeah. Obviously. Hon- honorably. <laughs> yeah. Honorably, you hold an ambush. <laughs> yeah. They invite him to a duel. Now this one would be away from the public eye at the drooping pine of Ichijoji. A match against Yoshioko Matashichiro, which is Dan Shichiro's son. Who is? A 12-year-old nobody. Okay. What they failed to mention was that every single member of the Yoshioko clan planned on taking part of this duel. Whatever it took, they were parading Masashi's dead body back through the capital city that day. Oh, shit. The night before the appointed duel, all 100 members of the Yoshioko school camped out at that location, which lie along the main road from the city to the mountains Musashi had planned on taking out of it. If he tried to sneak through, there was no way he would be able to avoid detection. At the drooping pine of Ichijojo, 100 armed men... <laughs> Ichijojo. That's like an old friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I laugh underwater. He was, he was so itchy. <laughs> God damn it. At the drooping pine of Ichi Jojo. <laughs> Fucking cut <laughs> shit. Oh, that's a place, not a person. You get used to it after about 30 episodes. 100 armed men of the Yoshioko lie in wait to dispatch of this Ronin vagabond. An hour before dawn, an hour before dawn, which was the appointed time of the duel, a pained cry rings out throughout the retreating night. And then another cry. And then another cry. And then the sickly wet thud of intestines hitting the snow-covered earth. (laughs) We all heard that. Musashi was coming, but not- On who? On your mother. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, sorry. No, this is good. But not from the city, but from the mountains they had hoped to keep him from reaching. Musashi was launching an ambush of his own. That motherfucker. Not only is he able to catch the men of the Yoshioko unaware, but he is able to fall upon them before they've been able to work the chill of winter from their bones. Their movements stiffened by the frost and the night spent outdoors. Yes. Musashi had had ample time to prepare and his f- t- had had ah. Musashi had had ample time to prepare and he fights his way to Matashichiro, slaying all the unprepared Yoshioka who lie in his path before savagely dispatching the lead head of the school. What the Holy fuck? Shit. <laughs> Some stories say that he cut down Matashichiro, and then the rest of the Yoshioko were so stricken with grief and overawed that they allow Musashi to go, as frozen with disbelief as they were from the elements. Some reports have his fighting his way past the rest of the attackers until he could safely retreat. And some, like the two-and-a-half-hour movie that just focused on just this encounter had him slaughtering every one of the bastards on the spot, a la Kill Bill Crazy 88 style. (laughs) For the sake of legend, I'm going to imagine that if I had my world just ripped away from me and the focus of my ire was present before me, I'd have no compunction about throwing my life away to destroy the object of my rage or at least opening up the opportunity for one of my brothers in arms to do the exact same thing so for that let's just say musashi's harvest of corpses left a feast for the crows that morning the glistening snow of the field now dyed a vivid carmine with the blood of the vanquished regardless of which of these scenarios ring the truest 
we can still say that Miyamoto Musashi single-handedly dismantled the most powerful and influential martial arts school that had reigned supreme for over 100 years in the course of a few days. But this is just where the story is getting started. Next time, <laughs> we'll talk about the steps he took to cement himself as being one of the most revered swordsmen in all of Japan's history. This guy's a fucking badass. Yeah, what the fuck? Big time. What do you think actually happened? What is, like... I honestly you think... You did he... the research. What do you think actually happened? When I mean, you mix all the different possibilities, you think he snuck through, probably killed a good handful of guys to make his way to the leader. They had, they had camped Killed out. him and then got out of there before everyone woke up. He was notorious for, show, he was notorious for showing up late. So he showed up early. He showed up early. I think somehow he got wind that there was going to be an ambush. Um, once again, I'm going to go off of, I'm going to go off a of popular story that I just, I just want to believe, where he spoke to a monk, and he realized that uh, the point of killing it's, it leaves such a void behind. There's your loved ones. There's the the service that you helped your community with. And he started to take a look at himself. And I think he left on that trail because he knew that there was an ambush coming. And there was no point of fighting it. But there's also that... He snuck fucking... in and killed the king. No, but there's also that calling. And and, and, and How's it... a six-foot man walk across the snow without being heard? I think he was wearing... Um, That's just it. There was, there was tennis hundred rackets people. on his feet. There was a hundred no? people at the time. But do you think he was in and tennis rackets? And they didn't rackets? expect him to come... From the mountains. So you have 100 people at the time. They're all milling about. They're all uh, jovially talking. None of them expect this to happen. Music playing. Yeah. What it, time is it? Uh, this, morning, is, right? this is an hour before dawn. So, so it's let's still say, dark. Let's say, yeah, let's say it's, it's 5 a.m., 4 a.m., depending on uh, winter time. Dawn, is, dawn breaks a bit early, right? I think uh, he uses. No, I think he had a zip later line. during winter. No, no, no. The, the, the sun goes down earlier during winter, which means the dawn would come earlier. Well, no, the the night times longer. But but it was it was one hour before dawn, so I'm assuming it would be about uh, four, I mean, four four p.m. five p.m. Probably. Like, I'm yeah, sorry, a.m. a.m. four five a.m. something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, and and everyone that they're, they're they're surrounded this this drooping pine of the Ichijoji. They how like, they not hear his footsteps? Because well, I mean, there's, a, got, there's 100 yeah, people around, if you've got a hundred people around. you've got hundred people, even if even if you have a hundred, no, they're people. not sleeping. They're they're waiting. They're like, it's an hour to go. You ready? We're gonna kill this fucking guy. But I mean, he even, killed he, our fuck. Like he killed our fucking masters, dude. Like yeah, this he, dude just awake. took a shit on a fucking school. But so it's four in the morning. Even if you have a hundred people sleeping, a hundred people sleeping creates a lot, a lot of, of noise. Noise, a lot, a lot of, of noise. breathing, a lot of rustling around. If, if you have a loud. big group and of people, and if you're six feet tall, there's no way you're not making a lot. Yeah, of noise. Yeah, that six feet. This makes more noise. Yeah, that's fair point. Fair point. <laughs> I think Drink, he's just I've, for the fuck of it. All right. Okay. I I'm think just he's. Say, I'm just gonna say. Let's let's end the episode here because let's fucking. Well, cheers. I have a theory. Yeah, let's hear the theory. I think that he had a zip line. <laughs> 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 of course you do. That he pre-planned. Right, and the yeah. zip line led right to the uh, master mm. that he killed, and so he zip lines through, and that's why he killed a few on the way. Yeah. Like, and the screams were distraction because he was zip lining by and like chopped off a head. Yeah, he just held his arm out. Yeah, it was like, like, chopped a head off, and then like they were like, "Huh?" And they all went that way, and then chopped off another head here. Zip lined through the whole camp, and then killed killed the master, and then snuck away. And then as everyone woke up, they're like, "Fuck!" I sincerely hope you cut this out. That's what happened. That, that was terrible. <laughs> No, but it's, I'm it's, leaving that in the response. Yeah, it's it's definitely staying. I know. In. I mean, considering Joel, yeah, it's definitely staying. It's staying in. in. Hey, but hey, hey, guys, hey, see, I told you, we hey. made it through seven pages. We I, made it through part one. Yeah, but, but and I, we've got part two to do, which is actually going to be a bonus episode coming out later this week. Yeah, and we're going to record that. But right we're going now. straight into it right now. So if anybody wants to hear that bonus episode, it's going to be coming out later this week. For now, we're going to close out this episode. Thank you for watching. But the story is not finished. So thank you all for, for tuning in this week. Uh, don't forget to like, rate, subscribe. On iTunes. iTunes. Follow Spotify. us on Spotify. 
Yeah, make sure you click the little download arrow. And leave reviews. The The reviews help a lot. And yeah, you can't and leave reviews on Spotify, but you can you can iTunes. on iTunes. Yeah, but you can click iTunes. the little downward arrow on the episodes, and that counts as a point for us on Spotify. Because you can listen to the show, but you can also actually download the show. And that, and that, oh. that actually helps a lot more than just listening really? to it. Yeah, I didn't know that. And also, everybody watching in the YouTube premiere, if you haven't hit the like button yet, what the fuck? Yeah, hit the like button. Okay, you know, well, I'm at the like button. We're going to say it so many times during the premiere. Just just hit the like button. I, uh, Everyone's name. I love everyone. Um, yeah, it was cool you came in the chat on the last episode. Yeah. Well, I, I would like to do that as, as many times as I can. Um, whenever I'm not busy, I would love to because I, I like I like the premieres. Yeah, it's fun. But, but it really, like, even just being like, hey, guys, there was such camaraderie there already. And everyone's like, oh, John, hey, what's going on? And I felt, and... Uh, Everyone's name escapes me now, and which I'm probably going to get shit for. Please don't include that. You're going to include that. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the more you tell me what ass, not to asshole, do. Asshole, asshole, savage. Gonna, when uh, you tell no, me no, not noble to cut asshole you. or fucking uh, Scotty the, the honorable, honorable dirtbag. Dirt honorable dirtbag. Scotty the uh, Scotty the honorable dirtbag. The uh, most GG, honorable obviously. of dirtbags. Uh, there was someone. Who Adam. Was, Adam's always the one that says hit the light button, button yeah. and also but, talks shit about and, it. And when they and when they did, I. You I was like, oh, yeah, I was like, oh shit, that's right. I even said, I was like, Dude, whoops, they are, it works. They are so good about that. That was that was spot the, on, and the, it doesn't feel like I'm being like reprimanded. It's it's like, hey, by the way, guys, hey, come on, let's help the boys out. That's the great thing about about the entire Drinking Bros audience is it's a family. Like yeah. uh, they are so loyal to not only the the shows on the network, they're loyal to each other. Yeah. And yeah. it's really just, it's a group of friends all coming together to... Never drink to, alone. To hang out. Yeah, never that, drink that alone. That was the That's... original motto when they first started. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and a special shout out to, to my, my son, Jake. Jake, you're a good boy. I'm proud of you. All right. <laughs> no, no, you're the host. You have to close it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Well, how you do I do that? You what want to take us out? I thought, I, thought, I thought that was... Whatever, like... whatever feels most comfortable. Yeah, you say each person that will, yeah. You know. uh, so, this has been the Iconoblast <laughs> podcast. What was this? Come on. No, that was good. No, sorry. Yeah, I was excited. No, well, no, you know what? Good. Try again. When I, I, I'm telling you to cut things out, but I, I, I so, okay, can we You're do it again? You're not going to get cut out. You, no, you fucking just piece go. of shit, I, Joel. You just got to go with it. Thank you for joining us on the Icono. <laughs> Fuck you, you cut. Okay, try again. Try again. I'm not fucking it up. Wait, remember on the, the, the Sam Lazar episode? Thank you. When you said, thank, "Hey, I'm fucking thank, up," can I kind of Joel? Let him. Can let I try him, again? Thank you for let joining. him finish. Coop, Coop knows what the fuck's going on because he has to deal with this. Now I'm experiencing it, and whenever I'm a guest on this pod, podcast again, wow! This second part, by the way, bonus episode probably not going to be as good. Bonus episode is going to be a wild Drunk. card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've already been drinking. Bonus episode is for sure going to be a wild card. Yeah, and we're filming it. We're going right to have fun with this one, uh, but. I would like to thank you all for joining us on the Iconoblast podcast with Matt Cooper and Joel Benner. And I'm John Devilman, telling you the story of Miyamoto Musashi and reminding you to never take anything at face value. Join us next time when we will continue part two of Miyamoto Musashi. Drink! We got it. We nailed it. It's perfect.